Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Land Baron, Bartholomew Bogue and his men terrorizing the small town of Rose Creek in the Old West. The townspeople gather in church to discuss what to do to defend their homes and lands from Bogue. The man shows up in front of everyone, when he enters the church with some of his armed men. Bogue claims that Rose Creek land offers little profit, and that he intends to return in three weeks to buy everyone's land for $20 each. The villagers are shocked, because the land costs so much more, but there is little they can do about it. Bogue's men then begin setting fire to the church. As the population flees, Bogue is called out by Matthew Cullen, who asks what kind of man he is to harm innocent people. In response, Bogue kills Matthew in front of his wife Emma, and Bogue's men kill other citizens in front of their families. Bogue tells his men to leave the bodies where they are, and they leave so that the villagers can see them clearly for a few days. Next, we see Officer Sam Chisholm riding his horse into a different town. As he rides, he draws the attention of many curious onlookers in the community. Chisholm walks into a saloon, and asks the bartender about a thief who goes by the name Powder Dan. Thanks to his lightning-fast reflexes, Chisholm is able to kill all of the other men in the saloon, even as their guns are pointed in his direction by the customers. He is ruthless in his execution of the bartender, because he is aware that he is in fact Powder Dan. Except for Josh Faraday, everyone runs away in fear after Chisholm orders them to call the sheriff. Josh Faraday is a gambler. Later, Chisholm provides evidence that Powder Dan was the subject of a bounty, and that he was authorized by a judge to carry out the bounty's execution. In the meantime, Faraday is being pursued by two brothers who think he has been cunning them in a card game. The brothers plan to kill Faraday, so they sneak him out of town to get away from any potential witnesses. However, Faraday is not an easy target, and uses a card trick to kill one of the brothers and wound the other in the ear. Chisome is seen riding away from Emma and her companion Teddy Q as they approach him on horseback. The woman explains the predicament that the town finds itself in, with regard to Bogue and their frantic search for justice. After overhearing Emma and Teddy give her all of their money and mention to Bogue, Chisholm gives in and agrees to assist Emma and Teddy. While Faraday is attempting to get his horse back from a stable boy, Chisholm, Emma and Teddy accompany him on the horseback ride. Chisholm offers to pay for Faraday's horse, in exchange for Faraday's support of their cause, and Faraday accepts Chisholm's proposal. The next step is for Chisholm to give Faraday instructions to locate a man named Goodnight Robichaux, in Volcano Springs. Faraday and Teddy see two men engaged in a gun battle when they get to Volcano Springs where they are. The first man believes that the second man, Billy Rocks, did not win fairly and therefore wants to have another gunfight with him. Billy waits for a moment, and then he tosses his gun to the ground. Just as they are about to fire, Billy suddenly grabs his hairpin and kills the other man by hurling it into his chest. Robichaux, who is his partner in business, walks around and takes bets from the other men. One man refuses to pay, until the identity of Robichaux is disclosed, at which point he pays twice as much out of fear. Robichaux has a well-deserved reputation for being an exceptionally precise marksman. After some time has passed, while Robichaux is getting his beard shaved, Faraday and Teddy approach the two men to discuss the possibility of them joining the team. After learning that it is a paid job, the two people come to the conclusion that they should take it. Elsewhere, Chisome and Emma discover a house that was previously inhabited by a man who has since passed away. They discover the body, and then they learn that an escaped Mexican criminal named Vasquez has been squatting in the house. Vasquez is the subject of a bounty, but Chisome offers him the opportunity to join the team, in exchange for avoiding being arrested by him, and Vasquez accepts the offer. When they get back together, the first thing they do is look for a tracker named Jack Horn. They question two criminal brothers in order to learn more about Horn's whereabouts. Suddenly, while they are waiting for the owner, one brother is killed by a gunshot, and the other brother is hacked to death with a hatchet. When Horn finally shows up, he grabs the axe and claims that these two brothers robbed him. Chisome extends an invitation for Horn to join the team, but Horn declines and leaves without saying anything. On their way back to town, the group has a run-in with a Comanche named Red Harvest. Chisome approaches him while still only having a basic understanding of his language and asks for his assistance. Chisome watches as Red Harvest tosses his victim to the ground, severing one of the animal's internal organs and presenting it to Chisome. Red shows his allegiance to Chisome by biting the organ so that he can have a piece of it. At that point, Red gives his word that he'll join the group and do his best to assist them. Horn ends up locating the others and deciding to join them. When the group arrives back in Rose Creek, they find some of Bogue's men waiting for them in the town square. McCann warns that they are getting into serious trouble, because Bogue and his army of men are coming for everything. Chisome tells him that the group of seven will be waiting for him here if he decides to take control of the town. 
McCann calls out to a shooter who is positioned on the roof of a building, however Red reaches the man just in time to stop him from firing, and throws the man's body off the roof. After that, the team begins to fight with Bogue's men, excluding Robichaux, who stays behind to observe. After firing at them, Red takes out six of the bad guys with his arrows. While Billy stabs some of the men and the others fire their weapons, Horn brandishes his hatchets and continues to attack the men. Finally, one of the men is fleeing on horseback, and Robichaux has him under the barrel just as they are about to fire, but he misses, and McCann is able to get away. Chisholm gives the sheriff orders to hurry back to Sacramento, and tell Bogue that they are waiting for him after everything has settled down. After the shooting, all the people come out to meet the team of the Magnificent Seven. The people are frightened, and some try to leave town. Chisholm estimates that it is about a week before Bogue returns with his army, because it takes three days to get from Rose Creek to Sacramento. With Emma's help, the seven gather the local residents to rally them in support of their town and families. The men begin teaching the residents the use of weapons. Faraday and Robichaux teach them how to shoot, while Billy teaches them how to use knives. The citizens with less life experience take a little bit longer to understand, but once they do, they behave significantly better. However, despite the fact that they are aware that their chances of success are relatively low, the group decides that they will not give up. Next, the seven free a small camp of workers that are being held captive by Bogue's men. The group promises them freedom and food, in exchange for their help in the conflict with Bogue. They come across a significant quantity of explosives, which they then bring back to the city. The messenger arrives in Sacramento at night and delivers the message from the sheriff to Bogue. After the man asks him a few questions, he brutally puts an end to the messenger, and then starts planning his assault strategy. The seven people quickly become very close to one another after spending the evening together in town, sharing a meal, a few drinks, and a few laughs. This strengthens their ties with the locals, and gives them a greater sense of purpose and determination to continue the fight. On the other hand, Bogue and his army are on their way, and the seven are getting ready. People are stationed at their respective posts, and traps are being prepared. Robichaux struggles with the idea of committing another murder, because he is constantly tormented by the memories of the people whose lives he has taken over the course of his career. After explaining to Chisholm that he does not wish to take part in what will happen, he decides to flee the night before the battle begins. After some time has passed, Chisholm asks if anyone else would like to abandon the mission without passing negative judgment on them. Everyone who is still there affirms that they would like to stay, despite the fact that it means they will most likely perish. Later, Emma makes an offer to take Robichaux's place. The moment of reckoning has come, and Bogue, accompanied by his humanoids, arrives in front of the city that they intend to take over. Bogue and a group of his men observe the assault on horseback that his hired men are carrying out. When the men follow Horn's pinwheel line, it causes some explosives to detonate, which causes the riders to be thrown from their horses. Bogue's men are fired upon by members of the populace who initially attack them. It turns into a massacre, and a great number of the inhabitants end up dead. Despite their numerical disadvantage, the Magnificent Seven successfully kill many of Bogue's soldiers. McCann is shot by Vasquez, which results in his death, and he then falls into a coffin. As an act of retaliation, Bogue gives the order for his men to fire a Gatling gun at the town, which results in the deaths of a great number of people. The women and children are taken to a safer location. Robichaux returns to town and joins Billy in the fight atop a church steeple. Denali, a Comanche from Bogue, enters the town on horseback. Horn tries to fight him, but Denali kills him with four arrows. When Emma shoots him and runs out of ammunition, Denali chases her into the saloon and tries to kill her. Denali and Red start a fight, which Red wins by stabbing Denali and pushing him off a balcony. Faraday, who has been shot in the stomach, decides to go into the open field, destroy the Gatling gun, and asks Chisholm to cover him. Faraday grabs a horse and approaches Bogue's group of men. From the bell tower, Robichaux and Billy give covering fire. He is shot many times but does not give up and keeps going. Finally, he asks to smoke his last cigarette. Before pointing the gun at Faraday, one of the men lights it for him. He slumps down, then stands up and displays a burning stick of dynamite. When Faraday throws it at the men, it explodes loudly. In the bell tower, Billy and Robichaux are shot dead. Faraday is shot several times before falling to his knees before Bogue's men. Only Bogey and two thugs are left. As soon as the two goons are ready, Chisholm confronts Bogue in front of the burned church. During the duel, Chisholm shoots Bogue's gun, and as the villain tries to flee into the church, Chisholm shoots him in the leg. The sheriff gives Bogue a chance to pray before he is killed. Chisholm begins to strangle Bogue with his own apron, as he reminds him that he and his men entered the town of Kansas and assaulted and killed Chisholm's mother and sisters. 
The sheriff narrowly escaped lynching and has a scar on his neck. Bogue attempts to shoot Chisholm by sticking in his ankle holster, but Emma kills him. The survivors are grateful to Chisholm Vasquez and Red, despite the extensive damage and countless lives lost. When they leave the city, the citizens all thank them and cheer them on. We see the graves of Faraday Robichauhorn and Billy. The residents of Rose Creek will never forget the men who fought for something that was not theirs. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.